Honestly, I spent way too much time ripping off carpet on the Basscat. Hopefully it's something I'll never have to do again. Now it's time for new floor, and after asking a bunch of you, there was a big debate between carpet or C-deck. So, I didn't go with either of them. I went and bought cheap foam on Amazon. So, here's how it went. So, today's goal, we are going to see how far we can get with officially installing floor in the Bass Cat. I'm gonna go ahead and just spoil it out there, guys. This is what we went with. We went with gray and white EVA foam. Now this foam right here is from Amazon. It's fairly cheap. What I'm trying out here is for you guys, for the most part. I do believe that you can actually find quality product on places like Amazon for a cheaper price because a lot of times companies just aren't known yet. The reason I didn't go with C-Deck is because honestly, C-Deck is significantly more expensive than this stuff right here. Nothing against C-Deck, it's just, it's a $1,500 boat. We're trying to do this on a budget. So that being said, we're gonna try and get the entire boat covered in this EVA foam. There's a couple of things preventing us from doing that. One being the fact that the front of the compartments are pretty disgusting. They need to be cleaned. We're probably gonna have to go through and clean them with uh, mineral spirits or what, what's the other thing called? Um, babe, what's it called? Pneumonia? Or you know what I'm talking about? Um, acetone, brain fart. I don't know why I was thinking mineral spirits. Anyway, so we're probably gonna have to clean most of this down with some acetone, but the biggest stinker in this whole boat is this residue right here. All the adhesive residue, the old carpet over here, you'll see it was you know on the back of the seats from the carpet overhang there as well. So the product that I picked up to try and get this glue off is wallpaper stripper. This is a stripper that's made for glues, adhesives. I haven't tried it yet. This is kind of the first time I'm using something like this, but I originally was using a belt sander because that was the easiest way to get all this glue off but that in return made a huge mess. Although it was easy, it put gel coat dust all over everything. I'm currently renting a house. I'm not trying to just destroy it with gel coat dust and it's not the most healthy thing. So we're gonna go ahead and try this product. You're supposed to spray it on here for like two minutes or let it soak for two minutes and then have at it with a scraper. So that's pretty much what we're gonna be doing here for the next hour or two hours. How's the scraping? Sweaty scraping. <laughs> he made it sound so miserable. Honestly, guys, it's literally 107 degrees today in Nebraska, and we're in a garage. Give or take, it's nighttime now. But all right, here we go. Check it out. We looking good. All right, folks. So we figured out the secret recipe. Get yourself a Brillo pad, some wall stripper. This stuff was five bucks for a bottle. All we did was scrape the thick stuff. When it got down to where the scraper wouldn't take it off, spray a little bit of this, scrub a little bit with the Brillo pad, and you're gonna be golden. I spent hours last night grinding my butt off to get all the glue off of this boat. It was not easy, but we got it done. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My girlfriend's looking at me like I'm crazy. She's like, you son of a gun. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I had to work yesterday. We couldn't stay up all night and get all the glue done. So my girlfriend actually took one for the team and literally cleaned all the glue on pretty much the entire boat, except for what I just scraped off while I was at work. So she tried to film it for me, but unfortunately she filmed the wrong way. So this is how the video turned out. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the update. I don't know, overall I'm pretty uh, proud of myself, if you would ask. All right guys, so here is what it looks like after cleaning up all that gunk from the Brillo pad. It actually looks really good. I'm gonna go wash up a little bit, clean off my sweat, and hopefully get back to the front of the boat. So from here what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to fitting the boat to the EVA foam. We're gonna go ahead and start with, I think the front deck maybe try and do the back deck, and then we'll move on to the compartments. The reason we're not doing the compartments right now is because they are just covered in fiberglass and they're gonna need some kind of paint. 
As much as I don't want to paint them, I don't think the EVA foam is actually going to you know, cover the side and actually stay stuck down. So what we're gonna to have to do is find some kind of paint that is very similar to this color gel coat. I know I can probably get the gel coat color from Basscat, like call the manufacturer, give them my serial number, get what I need. But in this case, I'm looking for other options. Not everybody is in that situation. Not to mention going directly through Basscat is very, very expensive. You might get the right stuff, but you're gonna pay for it. So I'm gonna try and find an alternative product that looks good, that works good, so that you guys can check it out as well. But uh, yeah, we need to cover up these guys and get that figured out. So until we get paint for those, we're gonna come up here and try and get the front deck covered. Now this is going to be difficult because it's not square first off. If you guys look right here, it kind of bows and then gets to like a sharp point, notches down, goes to another sharp point, it's just not straight. On top of that, the EVA foam is only 36 inches wide. I couldn't find EVA foam or even C deck that was wide enough out of the box to cover this area. If you guys don't know, C deck actually makes everything custom to your boat, which is what's really cool, but it's very, very expensive. Essentially, you order the specs based on your boat. They have a laser cutter that cuts each individual compartment out, you peel it off, stick it down, you're good to go. I looked into that option, but it would have ended up costing more than I actually paid for the boat. So that being said, I'm not gonna do that. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a template on cardboard or paper, transfer it to the EVA foam, trace it, cut it out the best that we possibly can with a super sharp razor blade, and uh, cross our fingers that it works. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Wish me luck. Stay tuned. All right guys, so to show you what I'm doing is I'm taking cardboard and a razor blade and I'm cutting a template. So if you guys look down here, I already got like the first one done. My goal is to try and get a complete cardboard template taped together for one side of the deck. And then what I'll be able to do is take this template and hopefully flip it over and mirror the other side. So if I try really hard on one, it should be symmetrical, I'm assuming. I think what we're gonna have to do here based on the width of the EVA foam is do three separate pieces. We're gonna do left side, middle, right side. I might even split it around the seat piece. Not sure what I wanna do with that yet, but. Take my tape. So I went ahead and started cutting all the templates out for the front deck. Little did I know that the EVA foam from Amazon would quickly come back and bite me in the butt. So you'll notice that we did quite a bit over the course of about a day here, but everything kind of went wrong. So you guys are going to hear about it here in just a sec. Oh man, so at this point, the sea deck is getting expensive. I am messing up left and right, not because I don't know what I'm doing, more so because this brand of EVA foam is just a mess. I'm learning for you, so if you guys have ever considered getting EVA foam for your boat, look out for this. So I went the cheap route, the cheap route, and I spent less money on the EVA foam, which is good quality. I bought it on Amazon to save money, and the adhesive's really nice, the EVA foam itself is really nice, but I wanna show you guys where it kinda messed me up, I guess. If I would've knew this at the start, I wouldn't have messed up. I would've had a perfect front deck, and now because I messed it up, I'm looking at probably another $65 mistake. So I'm gonna show you guys where I screwed up on the front deck, and if you look down here, it's pretty freaking obvious. You have this random cut, down the middle of the EVA foam. Now I know what you're thinking. Why would you cut it there? Why would you do it like that? That was completely unintentional. The reason that that actually happened was due to the company that cut this EVA foam. I was trying to have three total pieces. One here, one in the middle, and one here. The reason that you have to have three total pieces is because they only sell EVA foam up to 40 inches wide. My deck, I think across is about 52. 
something like that. Yeah, 52 inches wide. So you put the math together when the EVA foam is only 40 inches and your deck's 52, you gotta make ends meet somewhere. So the original plan was to cut it up in pieces and marry them in the middle where the white is on the EVA foam. The reason that this happened was because I needed a straight edge. So in my opinion, the easiest possible thing to do was to cut my template on a straight edge. So if you guys look at the piece of EVA foam here, you'll see we have a perfectly straight edge here cut from the factory, perfectly straight edge here cut from the factory. So thinking that if I put my template on here and cut it out this way, I would have a perfectly straight edge here, perfectly straight edge here, and I could marry them in the middle. And at, on this side, it did work, but this is why it went wrong. The EVA foam out the factory isn't cut straight. Well, it's cut straight, but it's not cut evenly. So if you look on this side, I have a two inch gap of, I'm gonna call it the wood piece, whatever you wanna call it, but I got two inches here. And then you look on this side, and you got one and a half inches. It's kind of obvious now, but I did not notice that when it came to cutting this. I just assumed that they would have cut it symmetrical. I mean, that's just, that would make the most sense, right? To have even pieces. So given the fact that it was cut a half an inch shorter when I traced out the template, this is what happened. I had the right idea. I just kind of got screwed over because these didn't come cut the right size. The other things that, are you know issues with this cheaper EVA foam is like you see right here you see all like the dark marks and stuff it's just not even all the way around so truth is you get what you pay for it's a good budget material if you guys are looking to have EVA foam in a John boat or something I would totally recommend this stuff but it's definitely hurting my wallet now that I'm putting it on my bass boat that I'm trying to make look pretty so i'm gonna leave it like this for now we're gonna finish the rest of the boat if i have some left over i'll fix it that's gonna drive me nuts i have to get rid of that it's gonna drive me nuts the other issue i'm gonna run into now because this is uneven and thank god i noticed this is when it comes to doing the rod locker for me to marry this line down the rest of the compartments for it not to look all funky like i'm gonna have to pick and choose the two inch side or the one and a half and given the fact that i don't know which one i cut this from it's a shot in the dark so fingers crossed we're going to continue getting the rest of the deck done i'll show you guys exactly what i'm doing once we get there but it's going to be tough <laughs> Alrighty guys, so deck is looking good. We got the rod locker on, we got this compartment on, and my next step was to try and go in the middle, but I don't have any leftover pieces that are wide enough to fit over that middle compartment. I'm still waiting on two more rolls of the C deck. I'm not gonna be getting a new roll until next week. I've basically tried to make my way down the boat, but what I've realized is because of this mishap up here, if I don't fix this now, it's gonna screw everything up down the line. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this leftover piece because after measuring, I found out that I can marry this white line up with this white line and it'll actually fix all the uneven issues and should in return make the boat look all right. I'm hoping, otherwise this is gonna be very stressful. So it's just dumb to spend $65 a sheet just to continually redo stuff. We're balling on a budget here I want this boat to look cool, but at the end of the day, I want it to be cool on a budget. So uh, we're gonna try and fix this right now and hope it works. Oh, I hope this freaking works. Thank God, it's only been like two days. <sighs> All right, I'll see you guys when I get this off. The next morning, it's it's been taking a lot of time to do this, but uh, let me show you what we did here. The idea of meeting up at that white line came out perfect. You guys can't even tell where we actually put the floor together. So the front deck is looking great. I'm super pumped. So we are good to go there. 
That was a super stressful, expensive project. Really was not thrilled they had to redo that, but whatever, we got it taken care of. So if you guys look down here, we got the uh, rod locker done. We got this little compartment done. Then we got these two on the left side. You guys will notice in the middle that there is just empty spots. The reason that I haven't done these ones on the front deck yet are because we're still waiting on more EVA foam to show up in the mail. So real quickly, I wanna kind of weigh out the pros and cons if this is something that you guys are looking to do. I have a few more questions that I need you guys to answer because I'm very confused about the front deck of this boat. But uh, let's start with the EVA foam. The EVA foam that I bought, there's two things that I wish I did differently. One, analyze the foam right when I bought it because the fact that the foam doesn't come cut evenly is a huge red flag. I called my buddy Matt, if you guys ever watch SB Fishing TV, I talked to him throughout this whole build. He's a good buddy of mine and uh, he got sea deck for his boat and he said everything was cut to form. So all the sides were even, all the lines were even. He didn't have that issue. I had the issue of having two inches on one side, one and a quarter on this side, or one and a half on this side. So that just caused a big issue and it cost me a lot of money. So that's one thing to look out for if you guys are looking to get cheaper EVA foam from Amazon. Also, the fact that I really wish I went with a different color. This color didn't really look the same as it did on the picture. It is good quality, I'm not hating on the brand. I'm not saying it's a crappy product. It's actually a really nice product. The good, the adhesive's good, you know, the overall like texture and everything of it is solid and durable, but it just, I don't know, it looks a little different. The white lines aren't exactly white. They kind of have like a blue tint to them. Some of the lines have black lines through them. And uh, you know, I just overall, I wish I went with a darker one. Now realizing how light this is, it is what it is. I like it, it looks clean, I'll take it. Anywho, you guys are probably wondering some other things like, Jordan, why is your deck all white? I didn't see you paint it. I painted it off camera. Guys, I, I really didn't wanna pay for the correct color for this boat. I could have called Bass Cat and actually done that, but it was very, very expensive to get a quart of paint as well as getting a perfect match. Given that I have all this automotive clear coat on here, it's just not gonna marry up well. So what I did was I just took a, uh, I believe it's like a, oil-based enamel is what I used, I believe it was, I can't, I gotta go look at the can. If you guys are curious, let me know in the comments and I'll let you know, but I used an oil-based enamel that I actually used on other boats in the past. It's by Rust-Oleum. And guys, this stuff, it coats really nice. And you gotta make sure you really sand things down so you can get a good even coating. So if you guys look right here, you'll realize it's not perfect. That's because I have a boat that the compartments are made out of fiberglass, they're not aluminum. So you're not gonna have just a nice flat, you know, area to paint over. So the only reason that I kinda did the top like I did was because I just want things to blend. So obviously it's not the same color color but when you look at you know the insides and stuff they're gonna blend all together and so long as you see the white I'll be cool with it plus I plan on doing some other things that I haven't told you guys yet with this boat so this white color will make sense I know some of you guys might be cringing but it will make sense the last question that I have for you guys that I need some help with is what the heck is going on with this deck space these compartments are supposed to be deck extensions for this Pantera 2, but I don't think they're original because they literally look like they don't fit. When I put them on there, there's like a centimeter of space holding on to the edge of the deck. To me, that doesn't make sense. There should not be like, look at this. If you look right here, they don't even fit. So like I can push it to the edge and make it work, but you barely have any edge for support. Same with this one. Like you have this that I'm assuming allows for space underneath the deck for an extension, but look right here. Oh, it doesn't fit perfectly. So you can wiggle them around to make them fit, but there's almost nothing for them to bridge to. There's like no support. Do you think the guy that I bought this off of just got these and tried to finagle something? I don't know, there's also hinges on the back of this one and there's nowhere for the hinges to screw into. When I bought this boat, these were in the boat, they weren't on the boat. So I'm very curious if any of you guys have ever had a Bass Cat or a Pantera 2, how does this contraption work? See there's straps and stuff on the bottom. 
It just does not make sense. There's no way that I'm gonna trust driving around with these deck extensions staying in place. It's just not gonna happen. So if you guys have any information on how this is supposed to work or ways that you think I should secure these down, should I put hinges on them and just screw them in, make them permanent? I love having the giant deck. It's freaking awesome. You know, you go to step on this, you might take a big old plop to the ground or fall in the water or something if these move around. So they're definitely gonna move around when uh, you drive. I'm trying to get more videos out for you. I got some really cool stuff coming. A lot of the stuff that I ordered, it's just taken a while to get here. So bear with me on the videos. We're gonna get this thing on the water very, very, very soon. I just need the parts to come in the mail. Shipping's been slow recently. So hey, leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions or if you wanna give me some information. I love hearing from you guys. Other than that, you guys know the deal. I'll see you in the next one.